Hi, and welcome to another edition of Access Central TV. My name's Andy Herzman, and today we have a, a great guest uh, I'd like to introduce. It's Dr. Marcelo De Silva, and he's here to talk about the healthcare system. Yes, I call it the health careless system. That's very good. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of problems with the healthcare system that we have in, uh, right now in this country. Um, what, what's the first thing you, th you want to talk about as far as uh, the problems? Well, they call it the medical industrial complex, and it's a complex issue mm -hmm. because it, it's consistent of various different entities, you know, starting with uh, doctors, the AMA, the, uh, also the pharmaceutical industries, the, um, the FDA, the CDC, um, and various different entities also, the interplay that they have as far as providing services for their consumers. Um, back in December of 2010, I was invited to be a panelist at Hofstra University. And uh, the topic was, you know, social responsibility in the 21st century business. Make a long story short, when I finally got a chance to address the panelists, um, I asked them simply this, is the pharmaceutical industry more concerned about finding cures for the consumers or making sure that their shareholders have a healthy portfolio? Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course the students went crazy and right. I didn't get a chance to ask any more questions. <laughs> well that's the one thing that I find a problem with this country because if you don't have universal health care and you have private companies involved, basically they're making money off of other people's sickness. Right. And I don't think that's moral to begin with, never mind, you know, uh, the other implications. But uh, what, what can we do about something like that? Well, first people have to be educated about why the system is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a little history. Um, in 1910, I forget, the gentleman's name escapes me. But he went on stagecoach and went around the country to do uh, a survey. At that particular time, there was only two types of medicines at that type of particular time, or practice of medicines, allopathic medicine mm -hmm. and naturopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, he went around, uh, did his surveys, went to hospitals, home, came back and made a report to the Rockefeller, the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers decided to just f fund the allopathic type of, you know, hospitals and so on. Mm -hmm. So you do the math. So naturopathic medicine started dying out, mm -hmm. and then allo allopathic medicine became as strong as they are today. Mm -hmm. um, do you know the difference between allopathic and naturopathic medicine? Well, natural, I would guess, is is more without being manufactured. It's more right. it's more natural. It comes from the earth, and the other side, I guess, would be. Uh, you know, where it's actually in a, in a laboratory, a factory, right. mass-produced type. That's exactly yeah. correct. And, and, and that's part of it. Uh, the major thing is like they're, the way they look mm -hmm. uh, at how a patient works, how their body works. Mm -hmm. An uh, allopathic medicine mm -hmm. doctor looks at the body as a, from a reductionist point of view. Mm -hmm. He sees it's different parts, like different parts of a car working. A naturopath looks at the body as, uh, from a holistic point of view. Mm -hmm. It feels that the body could heal thyself if it's properly nutritioned. Now, the father of Western medicine, Hippocrates, mm -hmm. said, let food be thy medicine, and let you know, food, you know, medicine be thy food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he says this. So thousands of doctors every year um, actually take a Hippocratic oath. Okay. And the first thing the Hippocratic Oath says, do no harm. Right. So, right. do we but really want to go there? <laughs> Think about it. Right, right. Now, also, if, if you're taking natural things for your body, isn't that preventative medicine? Isn't that actually yep. stopping you from being sick in the first place? Yes, it's preventative medicine. Well, let's just think about this. Mm -hmm. um, keep it simple, right? Yeah. Any medicines that are fabricated, or yeah. manufactured by pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just come out of thin air. 
It right. gotta, it's got to come from somewhere right first. Okay. They come from herbs. They come from plants and so on. Right. So stuff that's, you know, they can't patent. You can't patent a herb. You can't patent a plant. Uh, why? Because there's no money that can be made out of it. Gotcha. And that's the thing. Um, in this system, in this system that we have, which I call the health careless system, mm -hmm. there's no money to be made if cures are found. There's a lot of money to manage illness. Yeah, that's a good point. Treatment. That's a very good point if you think about it. Well, that's what I was talking about when people are making a profit off of other people's sickness. Right. I mean, that's, that's, to me, that's a big problem. Exactly. You know, because uh, the, the money becomes more important than people themselves. Right. And, you know, you can't, you can't have that. I mean, what is more important than a human life, right? So, again, it's like, what, what can we do as, as regular citizens? I mean, I mean, obviously educate ourselves. I, obviously you have, you know a lot about the, what's going on. But, I mean, is there, is there anything? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, let me give you a little history of the work that we've been doing at okay. my institute. Back in 2002, mm -hmm. um, myself and two other colleagues came up with this Project 22. Okay. And the reason for Project 22 is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying whistleblowers the world unite uh -huh. in three different industries. I was focusing in healthcare. Um, my other colleague was focusing in law enforcement, and the other one was focusing on environmental issues. Um, from 2003 to 2008, I we didn't get I didn't get one name uh, as far as that, and um, I was focusing basically in the psychiatric uh, industry, and um, and I couldn't come up with anything. Once we started organizing and combining forces with other organizations, not only here in the United States but also abroad, then we started getting names, and so on. Um, and that's how we started. Um, as far as 2013, we finally put a plan together called um, Phase One, mm -hmm. which is basically the purpose of educating and informing the populace to answer your question. What can we do as citizens? Mm -hmm. Information is power. Mm -hmm. Information and education unveils um, the darkness that's behind and sheds light on the truth. So most people do not know the difference between allopathic medicine or naturopathic mm, medicine. Okay. Um, the allopath, meth, allopathic uh, doctors, what they do mm -hmm. is try to say that everything else is alternative. Things have been uh, around a long time. They don't right. consider themselves alternative. Mm -hmm. Acupuncturists have been here for a long time. Sure, thousands of years. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, herbalists have been here for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's what it is. So it's kind of saying, look, naturopathic medicine, I mean, allopathic medicine has its place. Sure. Allopathic medicine, since they are good at looking at a reductionist point of view, they're great at surgery. So, for example, in Vietnam, during that time, if somebody got critically shot, injured, they would have a 30% chance of living okay. and surviving. Okay. Nowadays, it's almost miraculous. Mm -hmm. What surgery has done is reverse that. It's almost 80% of a chance if you get shot in Afghanistan or Iraq, mm -hmm. or you have an 80% chance of surviving. Amazing. So Amazing. they're good at that. We right. need allopathic medicine. Sure. Allopathic medicine is trying to say you don't need any of them. Mm -hmm. and, now, and we do. Mm -hmm. Nutritionists, we need acupuncturists, we have need herbalists reflexologists, and so on. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's basically what it comes down to. But again, it's set up in a system that they don't want competition. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right, Andrew. Mm -hmm. It's about the money. It's and that's what shame. it comes down yeah. to. Um, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what I wanted to say is, that, like, you, like you pointed out, I mean, it would be nice if we can take the best of both worlds and, you know, put them together for the benefit of human beings, you know. And... It, it, do you think it's possible for you know the, 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 it, them to work together? The people who sure. are who are you know uh, on both sides of, of the examples right now around the world, around this planet that we have, mm -hmm. where in certain parts of the world, such as you know Sweden, Germany, France, where there is mm -hmm. universal health care, mm -hmm. that is happening. So okay. obviously, they decide to put the health of the human being at the foremost. 
uh, aspect mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. everything else is different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what it is. It's a conflict of interest. We here, as consumers, are being our worst enemies. Why? Because a lot of those consumers also are shareholders of various those different um, pharmaceutical companies. Okay, okay. Well, again, it seems like money is the problem um, to, the, to the biggest degree, I guess. But uh, like you said, also education. Do you have a website maybe that people can go to and, and uh, learn more about, about uh, what's going on, what, what you do? Sure. Um, my institute is the Human Nature and Tomorrow Society Institute. I know it's a mouthful. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll say it again, Human Nature and Tomorrow Society Institute. So it's www.humannaturetomorrowsocietyinstitute and tomorrowsocietyinstitute.org. Okay. And you could go to that website and get the information to you at a later time. Okay. And I'm also on Facebook. So um, mm -hmm. if you befriend me, I could direct you to a site that basically we were just putting up together to basically educate, inform, also locate the corruption that is, you know, public officials are there, like for example, the Food and Drug Administration. Sure. It's supposed to you know, support and to protect the consumers. Right. right. So right now we're in phase two. Mm -hmm which started phase one on, uh, in 2013, which is an ongoing thing, because education, information, you gotta keep going through the sure. whole time. Sure. Phase two is we're addressing the Food and Drug Administration. Oh, well, that's, okay. The conflict of interest that they have mm -hmm. between the pharmaceutical companies and also the CDC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people have to be aware of that. I mean, Andrew, you know mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, maybe 20, 30 years ago, we didn't see as many commercials on no, hardly on, any. On yeah. Any kind of medicines and so on. Right, right. And we all laugh at it. You know, they right. say this pill will not cure, but will treat whatever illness you have. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, they say all these different other side effects it's going to have. Oh, the, yeah, they're a mile long. Yeah, exactly. But that's you know. okay. Because mm -hmm. we have pills for those as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a never-ending battle. It's a never-ending yeah. thing. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, you know, if you think no, about it, 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 it's not crazy. It's very smart. Well, because you know what, they got to make sure that they keep getting people to buy as many pills as they want. Um, one of uh, my friends, she's a psychiatric nurse, mm -hmm. and she feels extremely bad because one of her patients is 72 years old, and she takes about 22 different pills a day. Huh. Wow. Why 22 pills a day? Because she has certain illnesses she has, but the other ones are counteract the side effects that are coming from that as well. Oh, that's incredible. It's insane, really, if you think about it. It's just, you know, I mean, it, it blows my mind because this is the 21st century, you know, and we're supposed to be such smart, you know, uh, creatures or whatever. Yes. And the thing is, when you look at it from a certain point of view, it's really insane it's stupid right. you know and i don't know why it's not obvious that you know that th this is the wrong way of going about doing right. doing uh, you know medicine because when people have to go through all this nonsense and worry about money and have all these these you know big companies have the biggest say in what goes on as opposed to maybe doctors or so on. I mean, it, it just, one thing leads to the next, you know, it snowballs, it's out of control, you know? And we look at other countries and we see what they're doing and we're not learning from them. And again, it's, it's it, it, is it the stubbornness of this country? Is it, what, what's, what's the real root problem here? The root problem is it's, it's, it's motivated upon creating as much money, as much profit as you can. Um, you know, and the mm -hmm. only people that could stop this are the consumers. If mm -hmm. the consumers are aware that, you know, other alternatives are not alternatives, are actually what you need is a primary thing that you should go to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's how things will start changing. The power lies with us, but we need to be educated. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Media's not going to talk about this because, you know, Good I'm going to, you know, go on a little different path. This country is run by four different entities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corporations, right. the government, the military industrial complex, and the media. See, the first three control the media. Mm. And what does the media do? 
Well, they're not going to tell you what, what no. uh, the big corporations want you to Exactly. <laughs> they're going to misinform you. Right, 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 right. While we're concerned about weapons of mass destruction, right. it's really used as a, mass, a weapon of mass distraction. Mm -hmm. Keep people distracted. Keep them misinformed. Mm -hmm. Keep telling you, you know, be afraid of the boogeyman. The boogeyman are the acupuncturists, the chiropractors, the naturopathics, and so on. Right. right. We're it. And it's, it's, a, it's a generational thing. The baby mm -hmm. boomers still think that their doctors are gods. A lot of people from our generation, mm -hmm. Generation X, yeah. some of them still feel that. Mm -hmm. Some of us are beginning to say, you know what? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's how things will begin to change. Okay, is again by information and education. I'll give you a perfect example. My friend um, uh, Sarah, she was diagnosed with. Stage three ovarian cancer. Wow. It's wow. not very good at that particular time. No. Her boyfriend introduced her to raw food diets. Okay. And guess what? She's in remission. Amazing. All right? That's so amazing. it's right there. Wow. It, nutrition, naturopathics yeah. are right. Right. So isn't it interesting that all this stuff is happening around the globe for many years? Right. Um, right. You know, it was very different type of things. Um, um, medicinal marijuana. Mm. Uh, the oils mm. of that ingesting, not smoking it, right, right, ingesting right. it has mm -hmm. had, you know, incredible effects. Or dandelion roots, for example. There's many different things out there. Why is the media, mainstream media, talking about this? We know why. Right, right. Well, that's interesting, though, that you mentioned the, the difference between generations because could it be also that the older generation is used to watching the major networks and the, the you know major uh, yes, forms networks. of media? And the younger people are more prone to the internet, where yes. it's more open, and they can get information that you wouldn't get otherwise. I mean, is that? Do you think that's that's part of? I the I think reason? that's uh, that's definitely a major part of it. Actually, I was watching Bloomberg News the other day, and <clears throat> they were talking about how networks are, are freaking out because they're losing their sponsorships uh, because uh, you know the Generation Y mm -hmm. and the Millennials. Mm -hmm. They don't watch TV anymore. They're streamlining. Right. So right. now they're trying to figure out, like, okay, we got to, we got to start. In addition to what we do, mm -hmm. we got to start streamlining as well. Ah. You know. So okay. yes, okay. what you're saying has, you know, it's a valid point, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a valid observation. Right. So, um, you know, exactly. So that's how we're able. Things like YouTube mm -hmm. and social media has been finally given a voice for for us, mm -hmm. for the people. Right. Right. You know, uh, where before they can't control that. We control that. Right. We get to share that information and so on with each other and so on. Henceforth, as you asked the question beforehand, how we're able to get the information across to the masses. Right. And, um, right. you know, and that's going to be the difference. It's going to be an evolutionary process. Yeah. Because the powers that be, they don't want to lose what they have right now. Right. There's a lot of money to be made. Of course. And look, and I understand. If all of a sudden we start like, let's pick three different diseases. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, um, cholesterol, asthma, which I have asthma, mm -hmm. um, it's under control now, mm -hmm. and um, you know, one, cancer, lung mm -hmm. cancer. Right, right. Let's say we found the cure overnight for those three things. Not find the cure, it's already out there. Right. What would happen to the economy? It'd be devastating. I understand that. Good point. Good you know, yes. so I, I understand um, the aspects of it, uh -huh. but the bottom line is, look, we're Americans. Right. We, we've been around for a short period of time, and we've conquered and done so many different things that people never thought we would be able to do. True, true. And it could always bounce back. So it would be a devastating blow, but for the first time ever, the lie, the lie would basically start appearing, and people start... A lot of people are going to be very upset. Mm. A lot of he, he, one thing that amazes me, mm -hmm. most a lot of the cures that were found was before the 20th century, before 1910. Right. Okay. Now you're going to tell me, with the, the incredible advances in medical technologies mm. and doctors and mm -hmm. so on, mm -hmm. that we haven't found any cures since that time. <laughs> it's a question Good. that you say, hmm. hmm, right? Very interesting. Yeah. So. Are you telling me that our scientists and doctors and technology got dumb all of a sudden? All the ones that were really smart and intelligent and yeah. so on had all the resources were before 1910? Right, right. That's, so think about it. It's yeah. something to think about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? So 
people got to use this. Don't be fed mm -hmm. by media and trusting that a government right. is going to take care of it. Right. Because again, we don't live in a democracy, it's a plutocracy. Mm. And that's what we live in. So remember those four entities, they work in conjunction. Gotcha. Well, there's another problem also I see where you might get the information out and there are still going to be people who either ignore it or set in their ways or don't believe it or, you know, there's, there's going to be people out there who are going to be against it no matter what. You know, there's this, there are closed-minded people who, who aren't into new information mm -hmm. or don't want to believe it or whatever. I mean, what about that? I mean, is there anything we can do about that? Well, there's, there's going to be percentage no matter what. And yeah. I liked how you broke it down to the mm -hmm. people that, you know, are going to fight it, the people that don't believe it, right. the people just going to ignore it, and so on. Mm -hmm. The aspect of it is that there are one group of people that are benefiting from this in a big way. Mm -hmm. So they want, they're going to fight it and make sure to keep that information away from the people. Sure, sure. They're going to be some people that basically just, just going to ignore it. Mm -hmm. There's a thing called, uh, as a psychologist, a thing called cognitive uh, dissonance. Mm -hmm. And cognitive dissonance is like when two different um, points of view or two different thoughts are in conflict. Mm -hmm. So the people like the generation, um, you know, the baby boomers, mm -hmm. if they for all these years have believed that they're doctors or gods, and this, there's a group of people saying, you know what, they're not. They're just mm -hmm. regular people, right. and they are doing harm to you mm -hmm. by do not do do no harm. That was a hypocritic quote. Sure, mm -hmm. by emitting information or not sharing information that you know out there, that's causing harm. Okay. You're not letting your patient, your consumer, know that like you know what, stop doing chemotherapy because there's only uh, you know uh, a ten percent chance of succeeding. Ninety mm -hmm. percent of the times it doesn't. Right. Um, and there's something else you could do, as my friend Sarah is a witness to this, mm -hmm. they could do this. But they're not going to share that because then they're going to be like, bye-bye, chemotherapists. Wow. And going to wow. go to that. Right. So the money, and they get a lot of money from that. It's, so yeah. you know, so the con there's a conflict in that regard of sharing. Yes, there's going to be people that, you know, so th those people are not going to, like, believe that. They, like, because they've been trusting that for the longest right. time. that's my point, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh -huh. there's going to be people that are just going to, like, you know what, all oh, those wackadoos, they're crazy, you know, they're right. just going to pass that on. Right. Um, you know, so they are going to ignore it. And, um, you know, and so whatever. But let's play numbers. Mm. Let's say out of 10 people, this information is now accessible to them. And they know about this. Okay. If you get two people... Only 20% that would have never known about this and until they found the information and got the information that was introduced to them. For me and for many of us together, mm -hmm. we can feel that to be a tremendous success because it could grow exponentially. Those two people could share their information with two, uh, you know, two oh, other sure, people and so sure, on and so on sure. and so on. Of like I said, it's an evolutionary process. Right, right. But we got to embrace it and we got to take it on now. Okay. And, um, okay. you know, and hold those people accountable. Um, and again, I'll go back to why this is complex. Most people won't know this. The pharmaceutical industry is one of the major contributors to the, to the military defense in this country. Ah, okay. Now, the military defense is part of what branch? The executive branch. Right. Who's also part of that executive branch? The attorney general. Ah, uh, okay. So here ends the bureaucrats. You know, the bureaucracy, uh -huh. the red tape, and everything else slows down a little longer. Okay. And this pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical industry is a very unique, unique industry because they make so much profit in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. They know um, how to play the game, basically. They know right? how to play the game, and they play it well. Right. So, um, you know, they get, you know, so much money from research. Mm -hmm. They get all these philanthropist, uh, philanthropic people that donate their private donations to them okay. because they lost a loved one to cancer or something. Right. So they like, you know what, they, they want to do anything. They get all these poor people that do all these walks and all these different things to raise money um, for, you know, research and so on. Mm -hmm. Then they get a patent. So for so many years they got a patent so there's no competition. Wow. So what they do, they have a nice bean counter that calculates when they finally get a mass um, lawsuit, mm -hmm. or class action suit. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, they made so much money, it doesn't matter. But then again, there's so many medications before that. 
Wow. You know, so it they seems like it's set up in their favor, though the whole system. The, you well, know, well, that's why, why it's a you know it's a plutocracy that we live in. Yeah, those yeah. four entities work together. There's a website, and I, I suggest people you know mm -hmm. look at this. Um, in 2006, I, I believe they created this website. Mm. You know, people say they say this, they say that. There's yeah. actually a they out there. <laughs> they really are. Okay. And it's um, okay. www.theyrule.net. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to that website, yeah, uh, you'll find all these different corporations and all these, um, you know, board of directors that sit on a board of directors of multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't just sit on one, Andy. They right. sit on multiple ones. Wow. They said that I, I, I think there's, um, you know, they said about between 23 of them, they control about 40% of those multinational corporations. Wow. And what do they do? They have lobbyists speaking in their behalf who comes to a senator, comes to a congresswoman, and says, look, we, you know, we need this, this, or that, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'll fund you, you know? Um, so here's a senator and a congressman that just like got elected and promised the constituents so many different things. Right. But meanwhile, they now owe favors uh, because they want to stay wow. in there. Wow. Wow. So there's a conflict of interest. Sure. So again, sure. we are our worst enemies. But the way to combat that is to inform and educate the people. Sure. Let them know what's really going on. Right. And then engage. Yeah. As well, the show's almost over, so just to sum up, I want you to once again give your website out for people who want to know more information about this, because it's, I think it's a very important uh, issue, and it's, it's hard to explain it all in, in a half an hour, but if you can give out the website one more time, and uh, that way people can really you know, educate themselves on what, what the issue is. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Andy, for you know, allowing me to come and speak about this. It's something that I'm very passionate about. Absolutely. When people are dying out there, sure. are family members and so on, and sure. they're not aware of what's going on because they trust the system. Exactly, exactly. It's infuriating. It's criminal. Mm -hmm. uh, and as many of us right there right now speaking to that, you know, whether it be Gary Knoll or Dr. Wallach, uh, talking about what's really happening in the system. Mm -hmm. um, my website is... Um, www.humannatureandtomorrowsocietyinstitute.org. Okay, we're going to put that on the screen because it's a little bit Yes, long. it's a mouthful. There's yeah. a reason to be a mouthful because you guys will always remember it. <laughs> but that's why I asked you twice during the show for it because it's, uh, it's, you know, it might be a little difficult to get to, but it's important, and I'm sure a lot of people will be educated on it and learn a lot from it. And, yeah, this is an issue that's going to be ongoing, but I'm, I'm glad... We have the opportunity here to, to make people aware of it, and I think that's one of the reasons why we have public access TV is to talk about issues that the major networks won't cover, and this is one of those issues. And again, I, I thank you so much for your time and bringing up this this uh, issue and, and educating us all about uh, what's going on in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, is there anything you want to just say before the show ends? We have about 30 seconds. Live long and prosper. <laughs> I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> well, thanks again for being a, being a guest on the show, and, and uh, you know, uh, I really appreciate your time. And, and until next week, we will sign off now. And uh, thanks again for watching Access Central TV. Introducing the all-new Enclave. It's a minivan to the max, with features like remote control sliding rear doors, 150 cable channels, a full sky view roof, temperature controlled cup holders, and the six point navigation system. It's the minivan for families on the go.